end of this tutorial, you should be able to recognize that every object exerts gravitational force on every other object, and that the strength of this force depends on how much mass the objects have and the distance between them. Before you begin this tutorial, you should already be familiar with the concepts of forces, including contact and non-contact forces, or forces that act at a distance, such as gravity. You should also understand that objects have mass. Here we see the International Space Station, used for research by many groups orbiting Earth. Forces were used to launch the components of the station into space, and gravity plays a role in keeping it in orbit. Let's begin by discussing mass, because the concept of mass is very important for understanding how gravitational forces act between two objects. Briefly, objects have mass. That is, mass is a property of the object, and it can be defined simply as the amount of matter in an object. So high-mass objects will have more matter versus low-mass objects. It's important to know that mass isn't directly related to size. Think about something like a large boulder. It's very hard to move, isn't it? What about a cloud that's the same size as your boulder? A well-placed gust of wind might just be enough to move the cloud, but it wouldn't budge the boulder one bit. This resistance to movement is what makes the boulder massive. The cloud, on the other hand, is not massive, even though it's still quite large. Let's practice. For this question, select all true statements about mass from the choices below. Then click Submit. Great job! You seem to know that mass is a property of all objects and can be described as how much matter objects have. You also know that all objects, even very small ones, have mass. Gravity is the attractive force at a distance that acts between objects with mass. While here on Earth, it's most common to think about the interactions of massive objects as the gravity that holds us down to the surface of the Earth. If you tried to jump off the Earth, you wouldn't get very far because the force of Earth's gravity on your body is too strong. To overcome this force, we need powerful rockets that can escape the pull of Earth's gravity. Similar to how the Earth holds us in place, the Sun holds the Earth and other bodies in orbit to create our solar system. The ability of the Sun to hold the planets in orbit is due to its large gravitational force. Let's practice. For this question, select all true statements about gravity from the choices below. Then click Submit to check your answers. Great job! You seem to know that gravity is the force that keeps us on Earth, keeps the Earth around the Sun, and holds the planets in our solar system in orbit around the Sun. So... This brings us to the relationship of gravity and mass. We know that objects have mass, and we also know that gravity is a force that acts between objects. But how are gravity and mass related? Simply put, gravitational force, represented by a lowercase g, increases with mass. More massive objects will exert a stronger pull relative to less massive objects, but all objects pull on each other. Let's look at an example where you're sitting down on the moon, the earth, and the sun and have to stand up. On earth, it takes a little bit of effort to stand up, partially because gravity pulls on you continuously. We can say that the force you feel on earth is equivalent to 1g. On the moon, because there is less gravity due to the smaller mass of the moon, you would find that standing up would be much easier due to the smaller g-force, which is about one-fifth of that on earth. You could jump about five times higher on the moon, too. On the very massive sun, however, the forces would be much stronger, making it difficult, if not impossible, to stand up. That's because you would feel almost 30 times more g-force than you do now. Let's practice. For this question, drag and drop to order these objects in space from least to greatest gravitational force and mass.
Good job. You seem to know that the correct order is you, the moon, the earth, and finally the sun, due to the increasing mass of these objects in this order. Now that we know about the relationship of gravity and mass, let's turn our attention to the effect that distance has on gravitational force. Consider again the Earth and the Sun, which we see in this image at approximately correct scale. Notice how much larger the Sun is than the Earth. We know that the Sun has a large influence on Earth, enough to keep it in orbit. But what if our planet were much farther away? How would that affect the force of gravity between these two bodies in space? Let's take a look at a diagram that might help us see more about this. Well, the mass of the objects wouldn't change, because they would still have the same amount of matter, but the effect of the sun on our planet would be much weaker due to the increased distance between them. From this, you should recognize that gravity is not only affected by the mass of the objects, but also the distance between them. Let's practice. For this question, choose which of the following statements is true regarding gravity and distance. Great job! You seem to know that as distance increases, the force of gravity decreases between two objects. After completing this tutorial, you should be able to recognize that every object exerts gravitational force on every other object, and that the strength of this force depends on how much mass the objects have and the distance between them.